Welcome back to the Have Not Room. I'm Ben, and I'm joined here as always by Chad and Brian. And we are here to break down week seven in the Big Brother 22 house. All these weeks kind of just like, you know, roll together uh, <laughs> at this point. They're very, very much, it's very hard to tell the difference between them when it's the same people on the block every single week. Uh, yeah, we're here to, to break down uh, the Thursday and Sunday night episodes from this past week, talk about Ian's eviction and legacy, and also the upcoming eviction this Thursday. Chad, what do you think about Ian's uh, eviction? He is definitely the closest vote this season so far. Yeah, what do you think about his legacy coming out of this season? Yeah, I mean, this season, I don't think it really changes his legacy too much. Um, I mean, if anything, it puts a little damper on it because he, you know, he should have started playing a little earlier. He realized that, as you can tell by his flip out in the diary room. But, um, yeah, I don't think it changes my opinion on him at all. I still think he's a, a really good player, really smart player. Um, he did his best. And, like, I mean, how do you combat your closest ally in the house being Nicole flipping on you? Uh, granted, he put way too many cards in that basket, but um, well, made two eggs in that basket. But, um, yeah, I, I don't think it changes much. So I'm glad to see him again, but too sad he went too early. Yeah, same. Um, for me, I never judge winners too harshly on their returns, especially not their first returns. Um, JT from Survivor is probably the only one that gets me questioning a little bit of, like, what happened. He was so good, and then by the end of his run, he was so bad. Um, but he was in kind of a bad position to start off being one of only two winners, and that was compounded by the fact that the other winner was Nicole, and she's a giant snake, and um, she ruined her own game by voting out her top ally. When, when you have an ally in any of these games who 100% will never vote you off, I feel like you gotta try a little harder to keep them. Yeah, no, we kind of saw kind of a warped story on uh, Thursday night uh, and a little bit on Wednesday night as well about uh, how hard Nicole uh, Franzel was trying to keep Ian in the house. Uh, let's be very clear. She tried for maybe 12 hours on like Sunday into Monday. Mm -hmm. And after it became clear to her that the uh, committee was not on board at all, people like Cody were never going to sign off on it. And she realized that it was going to be an uphill battle to even convince Danny to, uh, to you know, go against the committee. Uh, she very quickly went from trying to keep Ian in the game to pretending to try to keep Ian in the game and trying to make it look to America like she was uh, doing everything she could to help her good friend and it was like tearing her up inside uh, while, you know, laughing about this plan that we see uh, play out on the Sunday episode. Uh, yeah, I mean, as far as Ian's legacy goes, I think that he hasn't changed much for me uh, because I I think that a lot of people uh, like look at his BB14 game with kind of rose-colored glasses in a lot of ways. Uh, I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that he is kind of an underdog winner. He is like the first like nerd archetype, super fan archetype to really win. And, and he was like the first of like a string of these, uh, this archetype. Right. Uh, and also him beating Dan Giesling, who was like heavily considered one of, if not the greatest player of all time. And uh, I think that we kind of saw a very similar game, honestly, from Ian this season that we saw that season where in many ways he was very passive in the first half of that season. He made a few very good relationships with people like Brittany, people like Dan, and he leveraged those relationships to get into what was initially a fake alliance, mm -hmm. which was the quack pack then. And similarly now he leveraged relationships with people like Nicole to get into the four prime alliance, which was also fake. Mm -hmm. And the difference really is that in this season, he didn't last long enough to go on a run and he didn't really he didn't win any comps mm -hmm. so the reason the quack pack became real in bb14 was because he started winning comps mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. similar to how the committee alliance this season was kind of like tepid in the start. And then when uh, Memphis won the second HOH, it became real. Right. Uh, so he got very unlucky this past week. He was the fourth nominee in most weeks. He's not going. Mm-hmm. And even being that nominee, he still was like the closest of anybody this season to be able to pull mm-hmm. off a flip. So, yeah, I think that, you know, I think a lot of people are giving him a hard time. I think that this doesn't really hurt his legacy in my mind. No. I think the biggest thing that he did wrong was like when we always say that like, oh, you want to you want to go to sleep before jury phase. He just didn't wake up in time to do anything about it. Yeah, well, I think that a lot of people say you go to sleep like Big Brother's a marathon, go to sleep in the first half and then wake up in the second half. Uh, I think what is not mentioned as much in that, like, you know, low level strategy uh, layout is you have to have the social connections and the strategic connections in order to facilitate you going to sleep Mm -hmm. so that you're not going to be a target while you're asleep. Because if you're socially ostracized in the house, it doesn't matter whether you're awake or asleep, you're going to be targeted. Or you're at least going to be thrown up in the block block as a pawn, in which case you get to go home. Right. Yeah, very true. So I guess better would be like, go to sleep, but uh, lay the groundwork so you have somewhere to run. when Somebody somebody this season who has gone to sleep and is now waking up in the second half is Memphis, in my opinion. Mm. I think that he's done that strategy. He put the work in week one, week two to set himself up to be able to go to sleep for four or five weeks. And now mm-hmm. he's woken up again with a second HOH. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I guess we might see Ian back if there's a jury buyback. I don't know what's happening there, but for now, let's just say that's, that's a wrap on, on our friend Ian, our fellow super fan. Yep. Um, I wish that he had worked with um, Janelle considering they played on the same season, but that's that's fine. Yeah. I, I mean, mean, it is kind of hard, I guess, right? Like, these these players who are on the outs just have never had any power. It just yep. sucks. It just sucks at watching one alliance consolidate every power mm-hmm. except for last week, um, and I guess it worked out, but we, we lost Ian because of it. Of all people, for it to work out against... So. Yeah, seven HOHs and six of them have been the committee, and the seventh one was Enzo, who was like the honorary seventh member of the alliance. Right. Uh, so. Terrible. Yeah, it's it's uh, been very difficult for any kind of uh, overturning of the uh, the established power structure. Um. So yeah, I mean that's that's Ian. You know, maybe there's going to be a buyback. I think if there is, it'll probably be after four or five. That's what's hmm. usually done. Uh, they haven't not done a buyback since I believe BB14. Mm. I think every season BB15 on has had uh, at least one uh, player return to the game. So, I mean, based off of that pattern, uh, it might make sense for them to do it. I think the one thing that would be evidence against it is uh, with the coronavirus and the COVID restrictions, it might be a lot harder for them to move them from the house to the jury house and then back. Mm. Um, but yeah, who knows? They yeah. have some way to figure it out. Um, yeah. So moving on from that, uh, we see on Thursday night, the start of this fire hydrant puzzle. Mm. Uh, and then on Sunday, we see the result of Memphis winning this HOH. Uh, Chad, what do you think about Memphis winning this HOH? You think it was a good idea? You think he's utilizing the uh, HOH well so far? <laughs> I mean, he's just targeting David again. Um, now, what, I finished watching the episode today, and he's just like... Sometimes I struggle imagining him as a good player, as opposed to just kind of being a little bit of a bully. Because <laughs> like, he'll just like come up to you and he's like, all right, you want to sit at the table? Like, and it's just like, what are we doing here, buddy? It, so it's like that whole conversation with David, um, you know, where he's basically just intimidating him to not play the veto. And then David catching on to it with the whole episode was so frustrating to watch because everyone's like oh well there's like a five percent chance the pull flips or david's like oh maybe he's trying to backdoor me it's like hello but like oh so i think 
it's a fine time for him to win HOH. I guess, that, um, like you said, he's waking up now um, after making his bed in the beginning. Now he's you know, starting to wake up a little. Um, I don't think it's really going to put a target on his back if he gets someone like David out. It's just going to be like, okay, it's a, you know, it's another week gone, another pawn, another one of these like floaters or people not in the majority alliance out. So if Memphis's plan goes as he wants and David goes home, it'll be it'll look good on him. It's another you know drop in his hat to win the jury over at the end. But you know as a viewer, it's boring to watch. But no, I, I think it's fine. It's nothing crazy. It's nothing too impressive. And good for him if it works out. Yeah, I mean, I definitely don't disagree with the uh, the move in the sense that, like, if you left someone, like, you put two people on the block and one person stays, that person's not going to forget that you put them on the block. So if you have a chance to get them out the next time HOH comes around, that's probably the most optimal, optimal move provided you're in a good position and there's not, like, bigger targets. So... I don't dislike it from a gameplay perspective. I just dislike it from like, uh, oh man, we've heard this story already. Mm -hmm. We got to watch it again. Yeah, I mean, I think that if we can talk about what kind of happens with the veto and his plans and behavior before mm -hmm. and after the veto competition and ceremony. Uh, but I think that I know that David was close to winning this HOH, which would have been very bad for Memphis. Um, but the other people who are close were Tyler and Cody, which I think would have been fine. Mm -hmm. I think winning this HOH was probably not correct mm -hmm. uh, because the majority of the committee alliance is has been setting up to make a move next week. Mm -hmm. So Memphis not being able to play in next week's uh, HOH competition uh, really, you know, hinders his ability to fight back against what could be a situation where somebody takes a shot at someone like Christmas, for instance, or mm. even Memphis, potentially, if Christmas were to win a veto. Mm. Um, so I, I think it's it was questionable to win. I understand he probably won because he thought that David was the in second place behind him mm. um, and didn't want that to be the case because he assumes that David would put him up. Uh, which I actually don't think David would have done. Mm. Um, but, yeah, I, I think that winning this H George was wrong, and I also think that he kind of handled this week pretty poorly mm. uh, in terms of setting himself up within the committee structure uh, headed forward. Uh, so we see on the Sunday episode, as Chad mentioned, him uh, basically threaten David, uh, like very condescendingly, uh, just like tell him, you know, throw the veto uh, and I won't put you up, which is basically like, uh, you know, if you win or if you, if you try in the veto and I noticed you try in the veto, I'm going to put you up. Uh, yeah, didn't uh, didn't like Ramsey's get in trouble for something similar in BB-19 and he yeah. didn't actually try? Yes. He said he would, or he, he thought that he was trying to throw the veto, but he ended up, like coming in second or something or winning it or something like that. I don't know. Yeah, he didn't win, but yeah. Okay, yeah, he, I think he was, yeah, he was up there, yeah. Um, but no, another similar situation where a massive power alliance is threatening one of the only people on the outside to like mm. throw a veto that it would be definitely beneficial to win. Mm. Um, but yeah, I, Memphis didn't only threaten David this week. I think we'll probably see this play out after the veto pick, but before the competition on tomorrow night's episode, where he goes up to all of the people, uh, the other three players in the veto competition, uh, which I believe were Danny, Nicole, and Tyler. Uh, it was definitely Danny and Tyler. I don't remember where the third was. It was either Nicole or Enzo. Uh, but he goes up to them and he tells them, throw this veto, because he wants to win the veto so that he can do the back door on David. Mm. Uh, because he knows that the rest of the committee wants Davon out. Um, so not only, like, the they don't do that, right? They all try. Tyler ends up being the one to win the veto, and mm. Memphis is, like, visibly pissed. And 
the rest of the committee is like visibly pissed at him and like openly upset that he like basically threatened them and like tried to get them to throw this competition and is mad that they didn't throw the competition mm -hmm. uh so that's not good as far as like you know setting up a potential move for next week that the committee could make on itself where memphis can't win hoh and on top of that with tyler winning the competition still he didn't use the veto. David didn't go on the block, and now Memphis isn't even getting his way this week. <laughs> yeah, it's a mess. <laughs> yeah, I mean that—that's not good for us, Ben. If Devon yeah. and Kevin are gonna stay on the block, no, for sure. I, yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, I've been completely out on my winner picks since I <laughs> won, but I mean, <laughs> it doesn't really mean this, too, too much to me. This is the first week where it really was just like, uh, yeah. I mean, she got so outfoxed, so outmaneuvered this round. And not only that, but she said some not nice things to David. We'll leave it at that, which, uh, you know, I think she's going to regret that when she watches it back because David is being sincere to her. Or even when she gets to the jury house, because Ian mm -hmm. does know that Nicole was the vote because she said her goodbye message so right. that's a good point uh, i think she'll find out within a few days that uh she was incorrect assuming she believes ian <laughs> well, she just thinks ian's also lying like i uh, literally have no reason to lie about this yeah you know i mean so was she saying sucks. even if she did know no uh, it, it didn't yeah. matter it's, it's yeah. just that you know it, it's a bad look you know oh, yeah be uh so uh like so like very very wrong and mm -hmm. to be and to feel so confident yeah. and to like you know make uh or like like have these confrontations with david where you're like you know uh kind of attacking his character and mm -hmm. uh you know when you're when you end up being incorrect uh, and it also is like Brian mentioned, uh, it's a bad look to believe Nicole Franzel, who is a notorious fucking liar <laughs> and was also the person who screwed over Davon and BB 18. Uh, that's so. the thing that really is like, really you believe yeah. Nicole after BB 18, which she <laughs> snaked you like yep. really, uh, it's like David isn't good at Big Brother, but like, you know, this his most egregious moves aren't him lying; it's him saying the truth when he shouldn't tell the truth. You know, right. like I, I just feel bad for David. I just feel bad that he had such a shit experience his first season, and this is the second season that he gets yeah. to have a redemption on. But yeah, I might come down sure. to just completely pulling for him at some point, you know. I mean, I'm pretty much there. I don't know who else who, who else is there to root for. This yeah, <laughs> I mean, like Cody or Tyler, I guess. Yeah, I mean, look, I already said I said last week. I think that at this point, either Cody or Enzo is going to win the season, especially mm -hmm. after uh, a Memphis HOH this week. It's very likely that a shot within the committee happens next week against probably Christmas, and then mm -hmm. Memphis being a backup plan if Christmas wins the veto. <laughs> so, Fuck <thank> yeah. <laughs> it's, it's very likely that there's some run to the end of like this Cody, uh, Enzo, Tyler crew. Mm -hmm. uh, we could have the Brigade Endgame 2.0 where Enzo is in a position where he might need to uh, win the final HOH. Mm. It may be, especially if Memphis gets taken out in the next week or two. Yeah. Um, I, you know. I just have this like, gut feeling that David or Nicole is going to be that fourth person with Tyler, Cody, and Enzo. Like, I mean, it'd be great if David is, but it'll probably be Nicole. <laughs> yeah, I assume... I assume that it'll probably be uh, one of them, yeah. And they probably are not going to be able to win those endgame comps against these three guys who have won like a third of the competitions between them. Mm -hmm. um, 
So yeah, I think that you know at this point, probably looking at a, a Cody Arenzo win still. Uh, Tyler is really uh, putting himself into a spot where it's going to be difficult for him to win a Jerry vote. I think, mm. uh, which is pretty familiar. <laughs> so. Oh man. Yeah, uh, obviously Davon's probably going to go. I don't have much to add. I'm cool with keeping this one short if you guys are. Yeah. Yeah. All right, then with that, where can they find you online, Chad? You can find me on Instagram at chadperry25 or on Twitter at also chadperry25. And Ben, how are you? You can find me on all social media platforms pretty much at Ben Sharon. Uh, that's Sharon with two R's. And you can find me on Instagram at the fake BMR, that's B-M-A-R-R. Uh, no, sorry, that's Twitter. You can find me on Twitter at that address. On Instagram, it's SuperMarBro. Still two hours, you can find the channel at WG Everything on Instagram at Wicked Everything on Twitch. Twitch.tv slash Wicked Everything. Um, I think we can retire TikTok with the way things are looking to go. Um, but, uh, you know, just... Let us know how disenfranchised are you with this season, or not disenfranchised, how disillusioned are you with this season? Do you hate it as much as we do? We would love to hear from you down down below in the comments. <laughs> um, so until next time, um, we're probably talking about Devon leaving, which pains me greatly. We'll see you in the next one.